You know, on those days when you just finished up a hard workout, you just got done sacrificing sweat to the gods of iron at the temple of swolitude, and now you're ready to take your workout recovery formula and you reach in and you pull out that scoop. We're going to talk about that scoop a lot today. So the design of the scoop actually opens up a lot of really interesting situations because even though it's a very simple object, there's a lot of things that go into actually designing it well if you want to mass produce it for 3D printing or if you want to print it on demand through something like our Etsy or our Shopify plugin. So we're going to go through how that scoop could be designed to be printed and how you can completely recreate it so that it's actually perfect for 3D printing. So let's just start with the normal scoop, the cylinder with a handle out the side of it. This thing is terrible for 3D printing. First of all, if you go ahead and start printing it, you have the handle up in the air, which means that you will have to support that handle, which means the handle is going to be rough on the underside, which means that you have a bunch of wasted material from the support, and now you have just a terrible product coming out of 3D printing. This is a very traditional situation where someone attempts to 3D print something that was designed for injection molding, and that is an easy street to a screwy, terrible product. What you want to do is make just a few tweaks in order to make this object actually really good. The very first one you can do is turn it upside down and print it facing down, face down on the build plate. Now the issue you have is that you now have the bottom of the scoop at the top, and that means that you potentially have overhangs that could catch all kinds of stuff. It could be all kinds of issues there. Now, instead of having just a flat bottom to it, you could instead round it out. You could apply just a fillet to the inside of it. Now it's domed, so at least now you don't have to worry about the overhang problem as much, but you still do. Actually, fillets are the worst for this kind of an option because a fillet goes from vertical to eventually horizontal, which means that you potentially still need support. If you want to go fully support less while still having really tight layer lines and a very refined surface finish on the inside, what you want to do is use a chamfer. And while this looks a little bit weird from a CAD standpoint, it is a better way of doing it because all of the layers will be tight and secure and reliable and you don't have to worry about anything. And on the outside, the scoop looks the same as a normal scoop, so no one would ever have any issue with it, as long as you make it just a little bit bigger so it still has the same internal volume as a regular scoop. And since you're using 3D printing, that extra volume of material is actually filled up with air and infill. It doesn't actually really use much more material because you don't have to fill in that whole volume with material as you would with any sort of traditional process. So turning the scoop upside down and putting a chamfer in the bottom lets you create what is now a very good product. It looks the same from the outside. It functions the same on the inside. You're able to use the process and you're able to get a good result out. However, there is one other thing that I have to emphasize here. When you turn it upside down or when you print it vertically, any direction, make sure you apply a one millimeter chamfer to the bottom of it. This makes sure that there's no way that that first layer can extrude sideways or inward and is always perfectly crisp and has nice clean edges and not some little sharp or kind of catchy edge which can happen when you have a feature called elephant foot hidden happen where the level of the machine might be off just a little bit or the flow might be a little bit different. Applying that small chamfer ensures that is impossible and can never really happen so that you have a really crisp and reliable part and you can produce tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of them in a large print farm like ours. Now, all of that was how to make this scoop that was meant for injection molding 3D printable. That's kind of a bad way of doing it because it starts with a bad premise. You are starting with something that doesn't want to be 3D printed and you're making it 3D printable. But what if you wanted to just make a 3D printable scoop? Okay, here we go. Now we get to get interesting. Well, if you want to make a 3D printable scoop, you do want to print it bull up. You want to have that facing up in the air, but now you still have that pesky handle on the side. Well, a very first and simplest solution of this is to put that handle not on the top, but on the bottom. Now you have the handle against the bed. You have the bottom of the scoop against the bed. You have the bull upward, so you don't have to have that chamfer on the inside and have to worry about overhangs at all. There are no overhangs. And from a user experience standpoint, it is no different and in fact would be even better. If you've ever used one of those little powder scoops, then you get your hands in the powder when you're scooping along there. But the reason they have that handle up on top is because that is where the mold comes together and that's the easiest place to put the parting lines, so putting the handle at the top is easier. But putting it down at the bottom is better still 
but they can't do it. You can with 3D printing, however. So with 3D printing, you put the handle down at the bottom. Now when you scoop, you're fully isolated from whatever it is you're scooping because the top of the scoop is actually the diagonal distance to the tip of the handle. So you have improved the product now while also making it vastly more manufacturable for this particular process. That is the simple solution. Now, if you decide that you really want the handle up on top or that kind of form factor in ergonomics, then rather than having the handle down at the bottom, extend it upwards, make it a slab out the side, make it a flat edge. And again, it's not really adding that much more material or even that much more print time to the whole thing. So now you have a nice big gripping area that could be thick and chunky if you want it to. If you do wanna add more material, you can improve the feature of this. In the context of this discussion, we're talking about a tiny little scoop, but this applies to any sort of scooping object that you happen to do. It might be a ladle, it might be an oil can, whatever it happens to be. But going back to our little whey protein scoop, the scoop now has a wide handle along the outer side. Again, make sure you're chamfering the bottom of the whole thing to make sure it stays clean and clear. Now, if you do not want that whole handle and you wanna optimize that supportless handle, you don't have to have it all contacting the build plate. And in fact, you sort of don't want it to be because having extra contact with the build platform increases chances for errors with the build plate. You can have contamination, you can just have warp, you can have all sorts of little artifacts from just layers smashing against each other on the build plate. So to avoid that, you minimize build plate contact. You can do this by just cropping off that handle, applying a chamfer to the bottom of it so that it grows up to where the handle is, people can grab from the top, it's fully supported without having support auto-generated, so you have a very clean, crisp, known product where you know that it will come out and be reliable every single time. Now you've created a new version of the scoop that is fully optimized for 3D printing and has features that were never really usable before because everybody else was always minimizing everything. So this is something to be aware of. A lot of people right now at the time of filming of this video try to take an injection molded design and 3D print it. And that is a losing battle right from the start. If you do that, you will almost always fail because injection molding is designed with completely different rules. It is for minimizing material and putting in struts and ribs and that kind of stuff and all these things to minimize and squeeze and push and all the rest. Whereas 3D printing lets you make really fat and chunky parts and if you lean into that capability you're able to create completely original parts that are both more competitive because they're truly different than all traditional pass processes. They differentiate you from your competition and you're able to create new features that were never very easy to do before. This technology enables so many new ways of making stuff, but you have to understand it as well. It has limitations. You have the bed adhesion, you have overhangs, you have all these different factors to consider. So you can't simply pigeonhole an injection molded design into 3D printing. You can make some adjustments in order to refine a molded design, but you ultimately want to start with a 3D printing design because it gives you so much more freedom and an entirely new direction to where you can now be competitive against what anybody else is doing. Comment down below if there's other sorts of features that you would like to have us talk about. We actually did a whole couple of videos around 3D printed handles. You can check those out around here somewhere on the screen. But do let us know if there's anything else you'd like to talk about around mass production 3D printing or 3D print on demand so that you can get a good product out of like the applications that we make. Have a great day, everybody.